Hey everybody, NFI Hammer here, back with another Necron video. In this video, I will be building, priming, and painting Scorpec Destroyers. I'm a beginner who's just figuring things out. If you like to follow along in my journey, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. The Warhammer Imperium issue number 4 was back at my local newsagents. I snapped it up because it only costs 20 dollar dues or 20 Australian dollars and not only does it come with the Scorpec Destroyers which Games Workshop sells for 97 dollars it also comes with a pot of lead belcher which you can never have enough so that's 6 dollars 50 of savings there and it also comes with this cool playmat as well which was very unexpected so this is an absolute steal if you can get your hands on one of these the assembly was a little bit fiddly as the pieces here are quite small and it's a push model so you don't need any glue. However before we get into that let's have a look at the 10th edition data sheet for this model. I'm still trying to learn and understand these data sheets but lucky for me the destroyers are pretty straightforward. They have a movement of 7 inches with a toughness of 6 saving throws of 3 plus and 3 wounds. They only have one weapon which is the hyperphase blades and that's got attacks of 4, weapon skill of 3 plus, a strength of 7 with a 2 armor penetration and a damage of 2. Pretty lethal if you can get close enough to use them. They do have another ability as well which means that anytime you make an attack you can ignore any modifiers which could be good if other models are trying to debuff your attack. They also allow you to consume the plasma site, which is this little Necron drone. And when you do sacrifice it, it means that your models have devastating wounds, which is pretty strong. So back to the assembly, it definitely was more challenging than the terrain pieces and the larger models. But there was nothing that was too confusing. A little bit of trial and error and I managed to figure out how the pieces were meant to get together. One thing that I wasn't sure about is if I should glue it together or just use the push pin method. So I ended up kind of doing a little bit of both. I was gluing it where I felt like it wasn't going to hold but I left the push pin to where I thought it was doing a pretty good job. And that way if I do need to kind of pull it apart to paint it a bit easier, then hopefully it should. So this is the plasma site drone. It was really cool, but it's very small. So these are all the models now assembled and ready to prime. Even without any paint on them, they're already looking pretty impressive. I think, you know, Games Workshop has really done a really good job with these and they just look very intimidating. But I had to buy a new black spray paint, so I have bought the same brand and the matte version of it. This is what it looks like after it's been spray painted. They are a little bit shiny even though the can does say matte. Um, and I tried not to go too overboard, so there is a little bit of uh, gaps in the coverage, but they're now ready to start painting. So I'm using the Broodlord Brass, which is Necron Bread and Butter. Um, this is definitely the most boring part of the painting. It's just getting this base coast on into a, like a good enough coverage. So usually I do two coats of this. One day I think I will eventually buy the spray paint so that I can kind of skip this step. But not today. I've also noticed that my, my brush skills have improved and I'm not getting paint so much in areas that I'm not wanting it to go. So the next colour was a Rhinox Hide, which I've been putting on the bottom leg segment of the Necron units and I think it just gives it a bit of an interesting kind of tough metallic look and then it's trusty lead belcher time to kind of break up some of the brass colors and any kind of segment joining two bits together I was just painting silver as well as obviously the necron head and the cords in his stomach I guess you could call them the internal organs and then I just, for the drone, just did a bit of the neck 
as well. My third Necron unit I've ever painted with these Necron Immortals and I used Rune Fang Steel for the shoulder pads and I think it just kind of gives them some bling over just the generic Necron warriors so I think it kind of visually brings the whole army together. Now it's time to get Necron-y by adding some moot green to some of the gorse weapon energy. So I'm starting off with the plasma site here and I'm just kind of colouring it in. I did take off the back panel um, because I didn't glue it, it was quite easy to remove. And then there's a few small balls of Necron energy on the legs and the arms, which is a little bit different from the other units. And then I just put a base coat down um, on the blade. I needed to do a couple of coats of this just because the black base coat is so strong. But I'm going to come back later and try and add a bit more texture to it. Then I'm using Rakarth Flesh for the skull down here on the base. I didn't notice it at first. And also the plasma side is standing on some destroyed ruins. So I'm going to paint this Rakarth Flesh as well. And I'm going to try and make it look like the ruined Factorian. So I've got some storm vermin fur here. I'm just painting the rocks on the base just to kind of give it a bit of a space moon kind of color to it. Trying not to get any on the model, but I think I did end up getting a little bit on the legs, but it's not very noticeable. So I'm trying to tie it into the ruined Factorian terrain. So I've got Mephiston Red here that I'm using to paint onto this pattern of metal. And I'm just trying to bring the two together so they look like a cohesive unit. And so to do that, I've got some Seraphim Sepia that I'm applying on the wall of the building as well, which is the same wash that I put on, just to kind of um, make it a little bit more interesting and to fall into the cracks and darken them out a little bit. So now I'm going to try some wet blending with some Corax White and Moot Green. And so I've not really successfully done any wet blending before, so I was kind of nervous about doing it on this model because I'm really liking how it's turning out so far. Um, so I've just put a little bit of white and then I put in moot green and I'm trying to shift the paint around. And I'm also trying to just stick to half of the blade at a time, so it's not really much area to work with. It's not looking that good. Um, so I then switched to the Abaddon Black and the Moot Green to try and do the other side of the blade to contrast it, the dark colours. This was maybe a little bit too dark. I don't have a darker green colour, so I didn't have much choice. Um, but it kind of looked like a cool effect. I did think that the paint wasn't very well blended and you can see that it doesn't look very clean but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out in the end you can see here with the finished product that it does create some interesting color and a different dynamic that I hadn't ever put on any of the other Necron models that I've painted so I was quite happy with it it's definitely not the best but for a first attempt I'm pretty happy so then I was going to apply some big rocks to the base because I haven't really done much basing recently um, so I've run out of my super glue so I'm using PVA glue instead to try and attach the rock. Surprisingly the rock managed to have a pretty good hold so I didn't need super glue. So to finish the rest of the base I'm using Astro Granite so I've not used this before but it came with my paint tools starter set that I got and so I'm just using a paddle pop here to try and apply it but I'm making a big mess everywhere and getting it on the model and getting it on the rim of the base so I'm trying to use a paper towel to get it off but it's not uh, working very well and I got heaps over the rock here as well which I was hoping to just kind of leave unpainted because there's no point painting a rock a rock color but I got so much astro granite over it, I had to in the end go over it with storm vermin fur. So I'm just trying to create some interesting textures with the astro granite, but I really have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm just trying it out. 
I probably should have picked a smaller base to try it out, but it kind of had an okay finish in the end. I didn't really mind it. It's kind of going for the moon style terrain that I wanted. So I'm using Agrax Earthshade here just to try and pull uh, some darkness into the recesses and cracks of the Astro Granite. And this way I can kind of create a little bit more depth to the texture. And then, yeah, as I said before, I decided to paint the rock to kind of make it look less terrible with having bits of Astro Granite stuck onto it which I was hoping to kind of leave as is because it's a bit too much grey. And then because it is a lot of grey I wanted to put some Jean Steel or purple so I'm just trying to dry brush some onto the base here just to give it a little bit more of an alien world aesthetic. And I thought purple, I have a lot of different purple colours um, because I'm thinking of getting some Tyranids but I also think it'll help contrast the green from the weapons. And this is a lighter purple called the Chala Lilac. So I'm just um, putting a really thin dry brush coat, just hoping to kind of capture the tops of the terrain just to give it a bit of a highlight. And so this is some Alien Turquoise 6mm grass that I've had for a long time, but I haven't really had an opportunity to use it. So I thought, you know, I'm really enjoying how these models are turning out. So. I wanted to you know give it everything that I've got to see how good I can get them so I'm just trying to put it near um, some of the rocks in my mind it's like the rocks kind of shield uh, the fauna from the harsh sun and conditions so life can grow and then finally I'm getting to the end so I've got retributor armor here and I'm just trying to paint the sigil on the chest and I did a horrible job and <laughs> managed to get gold on the background which is meant to be black to be similar to my other models and so I had to come back later with a bat in black and fix it up which is a shame and then the weapons were still felt like they were missing something so I got this phalanx yellow and um, I was putting it over the just the edges of the weapons this way it kind of looks like they've got a sharp edge to it i wasn't sure how this was going to turn out um, and i also put it in the back of the weapon which probably doesn't really make a lot of sense but you know i wanted to kind of highlight it and i thought this maybe was the the best approach i'm still not 100 percent sold on the finished product uh, let me know in the comments below if you think it would have been better just to kind of leave it as is or it actually worked the way it did in my head so the technical art coat is just kind of like a gloss varnish so i'm just applying that over to the weapon because the weapon has quite a matte finish to it and for like a hyper phase you know laser sword it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me to be matte i wanted to kind of give it a glowing shiny effect so I'm kind of putting a quick, quite a thick coat over that, at least on the front side. And the goal here is that the light should reflect off it. And now that the weapons are shiny, I wanted to kind of take some of the shine off the metal of the body of the Necron. So I've just got Agrax uh, shade here and I'm just applying a very thin coat over the model. So this is the final product. I'm really, really, really happy with how it turned out. I know I say that a lot with most of my models, but for this one, I don't know, something is resonating with me and I was just really proud of how they, they looked. Um, so super excited to try it out in my first game of 10th edition and see how they perform. So this is the whole unit painted as well. And yeah, I think they all look good and they all bring something a little bit unique and the bases as well are a little bit different on each of them. So super happy with how it's going. If you've enjoyed the video and you've managed to stay watching this far, please consider liking and hitting the subscribe button. It's totally free, but it really helps me out and keeps me motivated to keep creating content. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.